Let's go back to 2004. Back then I was just a small boy. I remember one day having hamburgers with my dad while we were watching the fairy odd parents when all of a sudden this showed up. Mind blown. An anime adaptation of Sonic? My 12 year old mind just couldn't process this. This is also a really great trailer, barely showing Sonic at all, just people talking about seeing him, it's, it's great. When the show finally premiered on Jetix, I was instantly hooked. The animation was amazing, it was actually handled by TMS, the same animation company responsible for Lupin III and Detective Conan. Not only we got to see Sonic and Tails again in animated form, but also Knuckles and Amy, characters I haven't seen outside of games till that point. The theme song, oh god, the theme song. Catchy as hell, straightforward, and legendary. People still talk about the theme song even to this day. This show was awesome. It was action-packed, full of adventure, the characters were great, everything was amazing. When I was 12. Fast forward to 2012, my 20-year-old mind was getting into the grind of the adult world and I was completely rejective of anything Sonic. Until one day I said to myself, Oh yeah, I remember this. And I don't have any of this, so let's watch it. And something incredible happened. I watched it, and it was awful. The voice acting was annoying, the writing was cheesy and stupid, and god damn Chris fucking Thorndike! He was such an annoying and useless character, and he had more screen time than Knuckles or Amy. What the shit? That was the last time I watched the show, but now I'm almost a 30-year-old boomer. I mellowed down a bit, and I think I am ready to give the show another chance. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. But, this time, I'm going to take you with me, and we're going to experience or re-experience Sonic X, arguably the most popular Sonic animated project. First, a little backstory. Sonic X was pitched in 2001 with an animated short. The look of the anime was basically the same as the finished product, but there are some differences, like no humans around, a more futuristic looking city, and no Chris Thorndike. Rumors surfaced in 2002, and later that year, Sonic X was officially announced with at least 52 episodes confirmed. The music of the show was also handled by Yoshihiro Ike, musician who also worked in Ergo Proxy and Kuroko's Basket, as well as in the 2019 version of Knights of the Zodiac. Character design was handled by Satoshi Hirayama. Now, about the design of the characters, they all look great, as you expect, but uh, uh, they look familiar. I just can't put it into words. Maybe this guy can help me. Hey everyone, Chomix here. I'm a pretty big fan of Sonic art. Trust me. In fact, the style that Sonic X borrows from is none other than the incredible, jaw-dropping artwork from the Sonic Adventure games. Yeah, no, I'm totally not biased towards this art style or anything. Why, why would you say that? Adapted from Yuji Uekawa's work from the Sonic Adventure games, Sonic X's art style would be simplified in a way that would make it much easier to animate. After all, the Uekawa style had a lot of meticulous shading and highlights, which would be a complete nightmare to have to redraw every single frame of the show. God, that just sounds terrible. Doing one of these drawings myself takes me about 5 hours, and you're saying that I'd have to do several more just to make a single second of animation? Yeah, no thanks. But man, I really gotta give them credit for how well they adapted the adventure style into something a bit more simplified. It isn't a one-for-one -one match, obviously, and I'd even go as far as to say that it kind of has its own style to it. Sure, it's based off of the adventure design, but it also has its own distinguishable aspects as well. It uses a three-tone style of shading, pretty similar to other shonen anime like Dragon Ball. Sonic's assortment of spines are a bit shorter and always seem to be grouped into three bits, even from behind. And overall, he's a little bit less noodly. I think when Sonic is on model, he looks absolutely fantastic. There's a lot of great poses for him that you'd expect from the Adventure Era artwork. But don't expect anything as graceful as the animations from Sonic CD or anything, because there's a ton of frames where he just goes off model and looks absolutely ridiculous. On top of that, the animation isn't exactly anything to lose your shit over either. It can be pretty cheap looking a lot of the time. So yeah, I just wanted to pop in and give my own two cents on the art style used in Sonic X. I just really like talking about art. If that's something you enjoy too, I actually put out a video about the history of all of the art styles used throughout the Sonic the Hedgehog series called the Complete Sonic Art Style Retrospective. So if that is something you like, make sure to go check it out after this video. But anyways, thank you so much for having me on Novika, I'll let you take it away from here.
Ah, uh, yeah, that was it. Thanks, Chomix. So, how are we going to approach this? It's simple. I'm going to review each episode of the English dub. If you know me, you know that I like my shows with the original language. But for the sake of simplicity for you guys, I'm going to endure with the English dub. But I will point out changes between versions. Since the show was localized by 4Kids Entertainment, they obviously changed some stuff. Most notably the opening and ending, which fucking sucks. I know Gotta Go Fast is a meme and everything, but you cannot tell me that it's better than Sonic Drive, come on! Also, we're not going to cover the entire show in one go. That would take forever. Instead, I'm going to be checking out the whole show saga by saga. We got at least eight sagas. The New World Saga, the Chaos Emerald Saga, the Chaos Saga aka Sonic Adventure, the Shadow Saga aka Sonic Adventure 2, the Egg Moon Saga, the Emerald Saga aka kinda Sonic Battle but not really, the Homebound Saga, and finally the Metarex Saga. So, without further ado, let us watch Sonic X. So, we start the story with a full assault on Eggman's fortress. Sonic tells him and Knuckles are trying to free Cream, who's been captured by Eggman. After making their way to the base, Sonic confronts Eggman, who then gets bamboozled into destroying his own console, which was powered by the Chaos Emeralds. This causes the whole base to be engulfed in a white light. When Sonic wakes up, he's in the middle of OH SHIT IT'S Lupin! After causing some traffic issues, Sonic is chased off by the police, who, of course, are unable to capture him. When he evades a barricade, the S-Team is called into action, a police squad in charge of high-speed chases led by actually one of the coolest and chillest characters, Sam Speed. Sam and his team try to catch Sonic, but he just blasts them off. After jumping from the bridge, Sonic lands in a pool and almost drowns, but he's saved by... <sighs> Chris Thorndike. Oh boy, everyone hated this character, and I'm not gonna lie, I do too. He's whiny, useless, annoying, and for some reason he has a crazy amount of screen time. Oh yes, people, this is gonna be our release. Well, maybe not that bad though, but the scene where he finds Sonic kind of hints at something else. Ugh, get me out of here. Okay, this is the classic episode one, and it's pretty good. It sets up everything you need to know, the main characters, the heroes, the villain, the setting of traveling to another world, a plot that I'm not too fond of, to be honest, but I guess it's easy to digest. They basically use the same plot for the Sonic movie. Sonic, Amy, Tails, Knuckles, Eggman, everyone, they all look great with their modern design, and this animation fits them perfectly. That's for the main game characters, as for the other humans, uh, some look good, some look really cheap. There really aren't any big changes when it comes to localization. Uh, the most notable one in this episode is the fact that the resulting blast from the console being destroyed is chaos control. But the translation team thought that that was the name of Eggman's base? So they will sometimes mention chaos control as the base, not the ability. This episode is a solid start. It introduces everything that you need to know and it's just fun. For that, I give this episode an 8 out of 10. We start this one with Chris trying to talk to Sonic, but after a bowl of cat food, Sonic just fucks off. But he doesn't, I guess. Next scene is the two of them just watching TV. Here we're introduced to... Chuck. Chuck is Chris's grandfather, another science boy just like Tails. While browsing TV, they come across a news channel showing that Cream and Cheese are also here, but they've been captured and sent to Area 99. Well, at least we know how to get there. Chris and Chuck want to help Sonic, so they go to the base. Sonic sneaks his way around, finds Cream, and then gets out with the help of another friend, Tails, who is also here. After the mission, they all return to the mansion and realize something. If Sonic, Tails, and Cream are here, that means that all their friends are here. But also, that means that maybe Eggman is here as well. This episode is fun, but really stupid. I mean, Chris tells his parents that he was saving a cat. He could have just said anything, really. Or why even tell them that he went to the pool at all? Chuck is fucking irresponsible as hell too. He's all like, hey Chris, let's storm this incredibly dangerous military base because apparently you don't want to live a boring life or whatever. Come on. This heist is shit also. They don't do any scoping out, no Lester phone calls, nothing. They arrive and they're immediately spotted. 
Also, they just park there. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone from the base can see them. They would have black bands on their asses in seconds. But I guess this base is just as awful as they are, since apparently they operate on GTA logic. Go to the camera's blind spot and you're golden. Why not just put a camera overlooking the whole hallway? Also, Sonic Neck. One cool part, though, is the, the little tech planes Tail uses to cut the power of the base. It's pretty nice to see Tails do more random little tech like that. But this episode actually has one of the best things you could ask for. Are you ready? Sonic says shit. Kids show? Fuck that, I'm a curse. I'm Sonic the fucking hedgehog. That's only in the Japanese version, though. And other than that, there aren't really any notable edits in this one. This episode is a solid 6.5 out of 10. We start at Eggman's chaos control, where we're introduced to the Monster of the Week formula. Eggman can't really decide which monster to use to cause havoc, so instead he uses a slot machine. I gotta say, it's a nice way to keep a formula going for a couple episodes. After choosing his robot, this one goes out to wreck the town. We cut to a sewer where we found out that Knuckles and Amy found each other and they are traveling for the time being. Back at the mansion, Chris gets all pissy because Sonic's not around for some reason. The gang soon hears about the shit going down around town and head out without Sonic to face the fiend. Again, Chuck endangering his grandson. They fight, they reunite with Knuckles and Amy, Sonic finally shows up, beats up the robot and then they all leave together. Except Knuckles. Now, this is a good episode. I like it for one reason. It has Knuckles in it. Knuckles doesn't really care about anything that's going around in this world. Like really, he doesn't even want to deal with Amy's crap. All he wants to do is go back to Angel Island with the Master Emerald. True to his character. No nonsense here. I love it. Character greatly represented. At the mansion, Chris is throwing a fit for some reason. Oh, we're Sonic, we're Sonic. Fuck this kid. Eggman terrorizing the city is pretty hilarious because we see one of the classic 4 kids changes that it's kind of half-baked, actually. You see, when you deal with 4 kids and your show has guns, boom, those guns become water guns. Or whatever the hell this is. But I guess they weren't fully committed to the idea of changing the guns. So the result of this is uh, realistic looking guns with fucking laser beam sound effects. This happens twice in this episode, and it's great. We do get to see the jet plane moan of the Tornado 2, which was created after Eggman destroyed the original plane in Adventure 1. Blood that hasn't happened yet! Ah, oh, whatever. What I also like about this episode is that everyone gets a bit of action. Maybe the interactions between Eggman and the police slash mayor are kinda meh, but overall, it was a pretty enjoyable episode. 7 out of 10. With this one, we finally get a proper introduction and explanation about the Chaos Emeralds. Mystical gems of infinite power. But fuck that, we gotta go to school! The president, yes, the president, is aware of Eggman's action, so his team is putting together a plan to stop him, having operatives already scoping out the space and trying to find people possibly connected with Sonic. That's why they sent an agent to pose as a school teacher to get intel from Chris, Mr. Stewart. We then move to a construction site where a group of workers dig out a Chaos Emerald, causing, well, chaos. Cream and Eggman catch the story in the news, and while Cream goes to tell the others, Eggman decides to send out his bird bot. Sonic tells and Amy go to town to recover the Emerald, with Chris joining along, of course. Sonic gets his ass juggled by a robot while Chris gets the Emerald. However, Eggman swipes it away and goes back and forth with Chris. Until his, of course, saved by Sonic. This is a weaker episode, to be honest. Uh, for starters, I would've liked to have more information about the Emeralds. Not for me, I'm a kind of sewer when it comes to them, but mostly for the other normies watching. The teacher is fine, he has some funny moments eventually, but he's kind of pointless. They pretty much already know that Sonic's with the kid, so why not just go to this mansion? We also get a look at Chris's friends, Danny, who looks pretty generic, and Frances, who actually has a great design. So much so that I think she should have taken Chris's place as the kid in Sonic X. One funny moment for me is when Chris takes the Emerald for Eggman, and he doesn't even run. He just stands there in awe in front of Eggman, almost as if they didn't even notice that he was there. <laughs> just take the Emerald and run, dumbass! Overall, pretty mediocre episode. This one is a 5 out of 10. Oh hell yeah, episode 5, here we go. Knuckles getting pretty upset about the fact that he cannot go back to Angel Island. At that moment, Eggman shows up and tricks Knuckles into thinking that Sonic's keeping everyone in this new world. Knuckles, in classic Knuckles fashion, believes Eggman and challenges Sonic to a fight. Back at the mansion, we introduce to Ella and Mr. Tanaka, maid and butler of the Thorndike State. 
Here we get some funny haha moments of the characters trying to pretend to be stuffed animals and shit. Chris tells an enemy go for a picnic at a lake, while Sonic receives his invitations for a 1v1. When the guys reach the lake, they are captured by Eggman as a backup plan in case Knuckles can not beat Sonic. Speaking of which, the rest of the episode is good old-fashioned Sonic vs. Knuckles action. When Eggman reveals his true colors, Knuckles and Sonic team up to defeat his ass. Knuckles and Sonic make up and everything is fine. This episode is awesome, everything is great about this one. No one's out of character, Chris doesn't have an important role, and of course, all of that Sonic vs. Knuckles action. It's just great, these two characters going at it, it's just fun to see. Sonic toying with Knuckles, trying all kinds of techniques, everything is wonderful. This episode is quite loved by the community, so much that it actually got one of those reanimated projects, when they take a bunch of different animators and remake the entire episode. But I remember it for a different thing. Guys, let me tell you the story of a legendary pooper named Deeper Cut. Deeper Cut was a YouTube pooper who was very popular and loved during the late 2000s and early 2010s. He created classics such as Revenge of the Mad Madman, The Joker Meets Claude Speed, which I watch every Christmas, and was also a member of the group that created the legendary Skook series. And of course, one of my favorites, Shut Up. This video is truly a classic, uploaded back in 2007. Sadly, he stopped making full finished pooped videos in 2013, and only showing two unfinished projects after that. His channel has been dormant since 2015, but he still seems to be active on Twitter. This guy is a veteran when it comes to pooping, and for me at least, is the one who popularized the Knuckles infamous line. Deeper cut, if you're watching this, you're a legend, my man. This episode is a 9 out of 10. How about we get a shitty episode, huh? How about we get a Chris episode? Techno teacher. We start with Sonic returning from running, and that's it. We cut to Chris having lunch when he learns that his parents are coming to visit. I should have said this before, but Chris doesn't get to see his folks too often. His dad is a CEO of an important company and his mom is a famous actress. That's why they're never around. Halfway through the episode, they arrive, but can't see Chris yet because he's in school. This time, Eggman's Robot of the Week is a teacher robot who hijacks Chris's class to brainwash all the kids into loving Eggman. However, the robot turns out to be a great teacher, earning the kids love and respect. Mr. Stewart gets kicked out of the class and desperately starts looking for a way to get the robot off. In the meantime, Eggman gets pretty impatient with the teacher, so he sends a message telling him to get off his ass and starts his mission. The robot refuses and claims that Eggman cannot do anything to him, and that he will defend his children. However, when the doctor does show up, the robot becomes a total pussy and finally begins attacking the kids. Sonic shows up, destroys the bot, lets Eggman escape for some reason, and Chris reunites with his parents. This episode is boring. It's almost all Chris. Sonic gets so moody at the start of the episode for some reason. The weekly robot is pretty generic too, and the whole gag of Mr. Stewart trying to get help it gets old quick. Not much to say about this episode, it's 4 out of 10. Speaking of boring episodes, party hardly. Chris's parents are around. Well, just his mom, it seems. We don't get to see the dad. Mom is really happy to be back home. So happy that she decided to throw a party the same night. Chris goes to school and tells his friends about the party. But Mr. Stewart overhears the conversation and invites himself over. The whole thing is just trying to have Cream concealed from all the guests while she tries to help around. After minutes of nothing. Chris's mom gets a call for a really important role in a movie and has to leave immediately. Dip in the party. I would too, lady. This leaves her pretty sad. Alright, Sonic's just around looking for flowers. Nice. The mom leaves, the guests arrive, and Cream reveals herself to everyone, except Mr. Stewart. Now the friends can just walk around the mansion normally. Cream gives Chris a crown of flowers and that's it. This episode sucks. It felt like an hour long. Nothing happened! The same jokes go for the whole episode, and it gets old really quick, and for the majority of the party, they are just... talking stuff, doing nothing. What I did like about the episode is that at least Sam shows up and delivers some of that high-class comedy. I admit it, I like living in the fast lane. Even when I'm in the supermarket, no matter how many items I have, I use the express checkout. <laughs> Cream is absolutely adorable in this episode as well, and the whole not seeing your mom thing at the end played nicely. Mr. Stewart not paying attention to tell Scream and Amy because he was just so interested in that damn pitting is also hilarious. But other than that, this episode is a bore, and it really dragged on. 2 out of 10. Yeah. 
This episode is refreshing. It's simple and straight to the point. Eggman's robot of the week is a giant satellite swallowing bird. Sonic and Tails get on the tornado to battle it, get wrecked, try the same thing again with a new plane, the Tornado X, and now they win. That's it. Simple. Pretty alright episode. Not great, not bad, in between. I have to be honest, I'm not feeling the design of the Tornado X. It looks like a generic super plane, to be honest. But hey, we got some Tails and Chuck scenes. They're really nice together. What really annoys me about this episode is that they are literally shoving Chris down everyone's throat here. Like, come on, there was absolutely no reason to have Chris in this episode. He did nothing during the final battle other than connect a fucking wire. And then Sonic's all like, it was Tails and Chris, but he did nothing. While refreshing, this episode is also just a 6 out of 10, mostly because it's kind of forgettable. Nothing major really happens. Every anime needs a beach episode, it seems. Tails, Amy, and Cream are preparing to go to Emerald Coast, while Chris has to go there as well for a resort opening ceremony or something, I don't know. Sonic, however, doesn't want to go. Once at the beach, everyone enjoys themselves, except Amy, who wishes Sonic was there too. Since she knows that he hates water and sees a couple doing it, Amy makes a lucky charm for Sonic. After the boring resort ceremony, Eggman shows up with his octopus robot, wrecking everything up. Sonic returns from being a bitch and sees what's going on at Emerald Coast. Tails and Amy attempt to defeat all the robots around while Sonic's fighting the octopus boy. Amy says fuck it and jumps into action when she sees Sonic about to be drowned. With her help, he manages to defeat the robot. After a little romantic moment, Eggman reveals his second bot, who destroys Amy's lucky charm, breaking her heart. Sonic's about to face up against the other mech, but Amy takes over and absolutely obliterates it, landing a final hit and falling in the water. After she woke up, she realizes that Sonic saved her from drowning. Lamenting that the charm broke, she was at least happy to see him there. In the final shot, we see that Sonic is actually wearing her lucky charm. This was a pretty sweet episode. I really like Amy, and this one was a nice way to see the relationship between the two. Amy kicking ass is always welcome as well. There are a few weird things, like Chuck telling them to lay low at the beach house. Yeah, lay low. While they travel there with their giant missile plane, we also get the usual changed dialogue from signs and letters shtick. Overall, a sweet little character focus episode, 6.5 out of 10. Every anime needs a sports episode, it seems. Tails is testing the Tornado X with a Chaos Emerald. Supercharged. He's actually trying to locate another Emerald around, which is exactly what happens. However, the energy surge causes the plane to crash land in a baseball stadium. Here, Tails meets the groundskeeper, who tells him that the stadium is going to be demolished soon or relocated, something about different grass, I don't, I don't know really, I wasn't paying attention. And also shows Tails that he has the Emerald. The combined energy of the Emeralds causes a giant beam of light to shut up to the sky, alerting Knuckles and Eggman. Eggman then challenges Sonic and his friends to a baseball game for both Emeralds. And chaos ensues. Eggman drops his army of rubble players and begins to wreck our heroes out. But in true Space Jam fashion, the boys slowly gain the upper hand. The doctor gets all pissy and has one of the robots hacks on his face and try to explode. But he's then saved by Knuckles. During all of this insanity, people began to show up to see what all the fuss is about, and at the end the stadium is filled. The owner then shows up and tells the groundskeeper that he can move the grass to a new stadium or some shit like that, I don't know, I never played bowling. This episode is pretty entertaining, really, you can't go wrong with the sports episode. The premise is just simple as putting a character in a situation. Sonic playing baseball, there you go, that's all you need. Seeing how each character tackles the task of batting is fun, actually. There is one scene that was changed in the 4 kids dub. In the American version, when Queen goes to the bat, uh, she pleads to the robot not to be too rough, as she never played before. The bot then blushes and discombobulate. However, in the Japanese version, Chuck takes Cream to the side for a little advice. When she's about to bat, she tells the robot that she likes him. Very anime-like. The result is the same as the dub. Overall, nice little episode that anyone can enjoy. Solid 8 out of 10. Well, you hear those six sax pipes, you know who it is. It's the Rooch episode, baby. Hit it, sax guy, give it to me! We start off with Rooch showing up for the first time since episode one. She's doing small jobs around town, stealing jewels and crystals. I really like this episode solely because it actually picks up where it left off. After scouting the island Eggman's base is located, the president is now giving the go-ahead for a mission to take down the base. But they're gonna need Sonic for it. 
They devise a plan to lead him for a fake emerald and capture him. But Rouge overhears the same thing and goes there first, misleading Sonic, Tails, and Chris, so she can get the emerald for herself. Once there, Rouge is ambushed by the friggin' SWAT and is arrested by... Oh, Topaz. I had such a crush on this character when I was a kid. She's... she's perfect. Oh, anyways, Rouge is brought up to the president, who asks her to cooperate in the mission, in exchange for full immunity. Rouge accepts, as she sees the position of a government spy as beneficial. At night, the SWAT team flies over to Eggman's base. While on board, Rouge is fitted with a bomb bracelet in case she falls out of line. The team infiltrates the doctor's lair, trying to gather all the intel they can. Everyone's equipped to go, except Topaz, who doesn't wear the ballistic helmet because she's a main character and we just can't have that, can we? Rouge eventually tries to separate from the team to look for more clues on her own, but Topaz offers to accompany her. She eventually finds a Chaos Emerald, and it's almost able to grab it, but the security measures activate, releasing a robot who captures Topaz and emits a sonic wave, rendering Rouge useless. She eventually outwits the security robot and destroys him with the bomb bracelet. They escape, and that's the episode. I'm not mentioning what Chris and Danny did because it just doesn't matter. This episode is pretty nice. We get a continuation of the whole government thing, and we can also confirm that Station Square is also corrupt, as the president allows Rouge to keep all the jewels she stole as long as she keeps quiet. Topaz is... Oh, Topaz. I'm surprised it didn't change the weapons here, really. Other than adding those laser sound effects, those are fucking MP5s. Rouge works great as a character here. Again, just like Knuckles. Rouge is true to her character. We even kinda got to see the reason why she became a gun operative, role that she still holds in Sonic Adventure 2. She actually might be the only character that progresses, going from a thief to a gun agent. Her relationship with Topaz is great and adorable. Topaz is such a great foil to Rouge. One change the dub made is when Topaz is about to arrest Rouge, she says that Topaz is tough for an old lady, which, meh. But in the Japanese version, it's a bit more hardcore, as Rouge says, you like to play rough, huh, as soon as she sees Topaz's cuffs. Well, that's it, boys. Sex is confirmed in the Sonic canon now, and Rouge knows about it. Overall, nice little episode without the main cast. It's always good to see other characters get their time to shine. 8 out of 10. This one is special, as it is the first two-parter episode. Yeah, we reached the end of the saga. We got beating Eggman Part 1 and Part 2. The preparations are set. It's time to take on Eggman. The army will attack the island by sea and air, while another team sneaks from the north. Rouge is also set to help with the mission. But they kinda still need Sonic, it seems. So the president straight up sends his aid to try to set up a deal so that Sonic can help with the mission. You see, this is what I mean. They already know where Sonic is. Why is Mr. Stewart still a thing? That fails, by the way. Tails, Chris, Amy, and Francis go around looking for an emerald on a field while Mr. Stewart tracks them for some reason. We also see Knuckles looking for the emeralds around. Eggman unleashes his robot of the week, a giant fan robot. Neat. However, things are a bit different now. Since Eggman left the base to go get the emerald, the president launches the attack full force. While the frontal attack is happening, Rouge and the team infiltrate the base. We then cut to some fighter jets preparing to go airborne, and we spot Knuckles who snuck inside the missile launcher. Sonic returns from... doing stuff to find that the attack is happening right now and tries to join the battle, but can't find Tails. Chris and the other lads are dealing with a giant fan, that's all. But they do manage to contact Chuck who tells Sonic that Chris is in trouble. The assault continues as Knuckles rides a fucking missile to also infiltrate the Eggman's base. So awesome. Meanwhile, the tornado is still dealing with the fan robot until Sonic arrives. He... he just... he just knew where to go. After a quick battle, the fan goes down. Tails get the emerald, but in true SA1 fashion, he loses it. But there's no time to bitch as the full assault is still going. Sonic and the gang depart for battle. Meanwhile, the SWAT team is having some issues dealing with Eggman's defenses, but luckily for them, Knuckles joins them. The battle wages on as Sonic also blasts himself into the fortress, where he finds this giant robot that's totally not a messenger reference, that's also being powered by two Chaos Emeralds. This battle is great. So full of action. Cut back to the SWAT team, they reach Eggman's power core and attempt to blow it up, but get trapped inside. After a grueling battle, Sonic manages to defeat the robot and take both Emeralds, while freeing the SWAT teams, Rouge and Knuckles in the process. The base blows the fuck up, and now Sonic and his friends are hailed as heroes, closing the first arc. These two episodes are pretty action-packed for a mid-season finale. The full assault was built up from previous episodes, and everything seemed to make sense for the most part. Mr. Stewart still being around makes no fucking sense, though. He has no point of being a teacher anymore. 
And for some reason, Chris gets all bitchy again when Francis suggests that they should all go to the battlefield. Which, yes, is dangerous, but even Sonic and the guys say, Shut the fuck up, Chris, let's just go. But, overall, pretty nice bow tie for this first saga. Both episodes get 8 out of 10. So that's the New World Saga, episodes 1 through 13. And I found the experience quite enjoyable. For the most part, the bad episodes are really bad, but the good episodes are... Good. I don't know, I kind of feel like the lows are really low and the highs are just highs. Okay, so what I like, the characters. They are all great. They all follow their classic depictions to a T, and I really like that. You just can't have a good Sonic anything without character, except Chris. I'm still convinced Francis should have taken Chris's place. The best episode of this slot is episode 5, without a doubt. Having Sonic fighting Knuckles is always a treat. The other human characters are alright, some bad, some good. I love Sam, he's just fun and full of himself, but in a good way. I really like Topaz, trying to act all tough. Well, I mean, she kinda is, right? I mean, she's an operative. Mr. Stewart is pretty funny sometimes, but again, mostly useless. Ella and Tanaka are kinda generic in their portrayals, but hey, if we need a maid and a butler, I guess they feel the part. Chuck is kinda unpredictable, to be honest. Sometimes he's really into putting his grandson into danger, and sometimes he just <laughs> doesn't give a fuck. What I don't like, the music. I don't like the music. It just feels like generic hero music. It's just not appealing at all for me. The censoring is annoying too, but mostly because it's not like they're changing blood, which actually eventually shows up. No, they're changing fucking letters, words. I never understood that. The worst episode of this lot for me is episode 7. Uh, nothing happened and it's just a bore. This season was important, really important. It needed a strong introduction, and I feel like these 13 episodes do the job well enough. It's no masterpiece of animation, it's not fucking Cowboy Bebop or Slam Dunk. Please go watch Slam Dunk right now. It's Sonic, it knows what it needs to be, and hey, if we have to deal with Chris for it, so be it. But overall, this first part gets a 7.5 out of 10. But this journey is just started. We still got a lot more episodes to cover. After Sonic and the guys are recognized as heroes, that just facilitates things around, but they still have more emeralds to find. And they still have to stop Eggman. And they still have to go back home. We're going to see where all of this leads in the next saga, the Chaos Emerald Saga. Before we go, I really want to thank Chalmix for joining me on this adventure. Go check his channel out, he's a great guy and he's an awesome artist as well. But until then, stay safe, boys. Yeah.